when I started thinking about world problems and more systematically, I ended up um, gradually coming to a perspective that was almost the opposite of the perspective I'd been operating under for, at that point, decades. And I came to the perspective that really uh, most of the world's major problems can be traced not to excessive emotions but to an insufficiency of emotions. Or it could be argued that the wrong emotions at the wrong time. So if you look at something like climate change, climate change is, are, is something that happens um, gradually. It's difficult to, de to detect. It takes a long time to unfold. And our emotion system is very much geared towards immediate threats. And climate change, the, the types of problems that our society is facing currently are much more likely to be of the climate change kind of variety. They're happening remotely to people we don't know, they unfold gradually, and they're difficult to observe. There's some, maybe there's um, a lot of noise and not that much signal. And, well, there's a lot of things going on. Partly, we don't, if, we don't want, if we don't want to think about something, we avoid thinking about it. In fact, I have a um, new paper we just submitted for publication on something we call the ostrich effect, which is when the stock market goes up, people, um, online investors, they get online and they kind of shake their metaphorical piggy bank. When the stock market goes down, people stay off the web. They don't look at the value of their portfolio. So it's true, if something is uncomfortable to think about, people don't think about it. People av avoid thinking about it. And that's part of what's going on with climate change. It's just too scary, so we don't think about it. But another part of it is that we, again, it happens um, gradually, it's remote. A lot of the consequences are experienced by people we don't know, people in other countries, people living in Bangladesh, for example. And so there are many, many different factors some of them motivated and some of them kind of more natural that cause us to have an insufficient emotion rea emotional reaction to problems such as climate change or poverty happening to other people in other countries. Do you think this is uh, something special for the developed world? Well, I think um, neither we nor people in Bangladesh are thinking enough about climate change. The people in Bangladesh are too caught up in their present day reality. And for, for us, climate change is too remote. But as a consequence, very few people are as upset about it as we collectively should be. Now, there are many reasons why the world isn't dealing with the problem of climate change. The biggest reason is probably the free rider problem. If I cut back my emissions, I flew here on a jet, if I cut back uh, my emissions, it's going to um, hurt me and have very little uh, ben the benefit of the decrease in climate change is not going to accrue to me. It's going to accrue minimally to all the people in the world and future generations. So the free rider problem is probably the single biggest reason why we're not dealing with climate change. But if we collectively get upset about things, we often find ways to surmount the free rider problem. So nations go to, war, go to war despite the free rider problem. Each soldier would prefer for everyone else to fight and to stay home, him or herself. But that, um, that doesn't happen. People do go to war. So if we got upset enough about climate change the way we will get upset about some other nation who we think are, is, which we think is encroaching on our land or on our rights, we would, probably, we would do something about it. We'd figure out a way to surmount the free rider problem, but we don't.